The next morning, after my fabulous breakfast of egg sandwich and coffee, we began to get ready to lower the mast. This was my first time ever lowering a mast on an RC-27 or on anything else, as a matter of fact. And I'm not sure I was ready for all of this. Thank goodness Richard and Shinoa were here to help out because there wouldn't be any record of any of this if Shinoa had not been using the camera. She's a fantastic camera woman, by the way. Come on. Can you open it? Tell me what you're doing. We have to take off this board and where it holds on the side nav lights. Okay. Then we're going to take off this board and then we're going to take off this wire. You're strong, I saw yesterday. And Richard, without him, I probably would have asked Todd at the boatyard to go ahead and just use his crane. By the way, he really wanted to do that. He was a little frustrated with us for insisting that we do it our own way. But when all was said and done, he was pretty impressed with the job we had done. At this point we we're almost ready to start lowering the mast. It was a bit of a challenge to get everything set up but with Richard's help I'm pretty sure we're ready to go now. And then uh, Caleb pull up on the topping lift and the main halyard over here. You're still gonna have to snug up on the topping lift and the main halyard. You want to tell me what you just removed? I just removed the lower aft shroud. And Richard's doing the same thing on the other side. Let me explain what we've done so far. We have rigged an attachment here with a line that goes to the end of the boom right here and one that goes down to the deck there so that as the boom comes up it will be supported supporting the mast as it comes up this becomes like the mast as it lifts up the main sheet is pulling down on the boom that halyard and topping lift going up to the top of the mast okay. is holding the mast to the boom so the main sheet becomes the part that is that is supporting the mast and the boom. That's why we put these on here to support the boom as it goes up from so you, side to side. To keep so it when you sliding. lower it, you kind of just, is it's like a pulley system to lower it slowly. Well, you use the main sheet. Like that. Okay. So what is our next step here, boys? I think we're ready. We you ready for some lowering? Loosen, you don't loosen any of these? Okay, so you are gonna Pull on the head stay while I while I release the main sheet. Is that right? It's coming forward. It's not gonna fall. You gotta pull. Only way. There it well, goes. Up helping or? Oh, it scares me. I'm just afraid that it's just gonna just fall. You've got it. Okay. You can clean it. You can clean it. You're doing fine. Okay. It's really pulling on those. That's what it's supposed to do? Where? These. That's what Feel it's supposed tension, to do. Feel right? the tension, Caleb? Yeah, they're tense. Yeah, they're like super tense. I'm thinking these back ones maybe are the problem. So at this point, there she is. See the boom is holding up the mast as we lower it. We slowly loaded, lowered it down. By the way, don't pay attention to Mig's old name. That's not who she really is. She was always meant to be Mig. This was pretty exciting because I thought the main sheet was long enough to do this, but somebody had cut a little bit extra off of the main sheet. And I was just barely holding on. And I was afraid to let go. I was like, what's going to happen if I just let go? And finally, Richard just said, just let go. You're not doing anything. And then Caleb got a big laugh out of that. He thought that was pretty funny. There I am just kind of hanging on like I'm doing something. And I really wasn't doing anything at all. It's going to fall that way. Yeah. Because it's a tall rig. Uh-huh. And 
We've got all this back pull that's trying to pull it. Feeling it. nervous. Just have a seat now. Oh, Caleb. You want me to do the shape test? So here we are. Up on the scaffold. So it doesn't want to lower for up this way, is that it wants thing? to go left. Yeah, because it's not supported on that side. Undo the other one. Nothing's holding it up anymore. No, it's not. <laughs> a little bit further, Richard. No, once well, we're done, done for now. Oh, we gotta film Caleb eating his first in and out burger. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty good. Caleb approve. In and out. Not a sponsor, just tasty. <laughs> mm. I love that. At this point, Richard and I had gone to the hardware store, and Todd, the owner of the boatyard, didn't tell us that he was coming that early. He had given us a time about two hours later to pick up the boat. So we were gone, and thank goodness for Shanoa. She picks up the camera and just starts filming. Oh, look, she's swinging, she's swinging, she's in the air! These big crane-like things are called travel lifts. They lift up boats of any size, basically. This one is one of the larger ones. It picks up big fishing boats. It was definitely a little oversized for what MIG needed, but travel lifts are a pretty amazing piece of equipment. This is my brand new trailer that I had built specifically for MIG, and they were to use very specific uh, measurements that I gave them for a North Sea 27 when they built it. And as you can see, if you look carefully, it's not quite the right size. I'll get into that a little more as we go today. This machine is, is incredible. It's huge. It moves giant boats. It's Big looks tiny in it, but still. Okay, we're gonna see how well she sets on. If you look carefully here, you can see that the sailboat stands are way too high for MIG. The aft one is also so far back that it obviously was not designed for a North Sea 27 like they were supposed to. And I had also paid for a custom designed trailer. Essentially, they ripped me off. Not only that, but they did not hook up the electric trailer brakes. They were not even wired. We had to do that ourselves. I do not recommend the company Tough Trailers. It is actually a great trailer now that we've had the boatyard completely redo all of the stands and we had to pay for it. They didn't even offer to make that up and make that right. I had to pay for it. Todd at Renneke Marine in uh, Eureka, by the way, is a fantastic guy. He went way above and beyond to help me out not only when I was coming into Eureka but he took care of the boat for me for a few months while I left it there at a very reasonable rate he gave me a break on the rate and 
Then he got out a plasma torch and they redid all these stands. And it only cost me $500. And here comes Captain Topher and Richard running late. <laughs> So right here you can really see the issue. You see how tall the boat stands are. So we had to cut off about eight inches of each of those stands with a plasma torch. And then the pole that goes down inside those stands also had to be cut off the same amount. And then it would lower down low enough. The other thing is the, the very far back stand needed to be moved up. That really wasn't much of an issue. Uh, they had some tangs on there so we could just hook it up to the new ones. And then uh, the only other issue is those boat stands didn't turn and rotate to fit the hull very well. But I gotta say, the trailer has worked really fantastic since we did all these modifications. Here you can see the modifications and the difference in the size of the stands. So after some modifications, we are going to lower it again.
by your charm Enchanted by your ways In the magic of your eyes I'll become